In this video, we're going to cover some tips to make it easy to navigate in the program, as well as a couple more very basic setups that need to occur as you're first starting to use the program. We have already had a video on logging in and setting up users. So what we are going to look at now are adding employees and then under customize setting up crews. You click on the employee tab and this is where you can enter employees. The program comes preloaded with one employee and you add new employees by clicking um, new employee here. And the thing to keep in mind is the first name field is uh, separate from the last name field. You don't need a lot of initial information about employees. I mean, you certainly can add more here, but for our purposes, first and last name are sufficient. Then hit save, and now you've got that set up. You're also able to um, edit an employee. One employee as a placeholder, we are going to then edit this to give us another employee. So we come in here and we do Clyde Barrow. And again, we're not going to put in the rest of this. Uh, we can talk later as we talk about employee reports, how some of these might come into play. Why am I having you set up employees? The reason is in a moment, we're going to set up crews. Both of these steps are necessary preliminaries to then starting to set up the jobs you're going to perform as a, as a company, the jobs you offer as a company. The reason employees are important and crews are important, when you start using CLIP and you record how long a job takes, so if a job goes from 9 a.m. to 9.30, if there's one person on it, that's half a man hour. If there are four people on it, that's two man hours. And that makes a huge difference when calculating whether or not that service is being profitable for you. To get that very valuable information, which we'll talk about more in depth in future videos, you need to know how many people were on this. These employees don't have to be real people. They can be John Doe 1, Jane Doe 2, John Smith 3, whatever number of bodies you might want in the system to then assign to crews so that when a job is recorded, it has an accurate count as to who is on, how many people are on that crew for calculating the times. Okay, we have a couple employees here. Now I move on to customize and under customize, you've got different options. Now, let me point out a couple things. Notice you've got the, the options here underneath the tab. You also have the options over here. So change list, there's zone list, uh, country list, property category, and here's zone, country, property, and so on. I'm going to click on crew here. Again, I could scroll down and click on it here. I guess I'll click on it down there. Uh, right. Just as the program came with a sample employee, we've come with a sample crew. I am going to add a new crew, so I click add. And when you click add, one thing you can do is assign a crew number. What we recommend is setting up ranges of crew numbers based on types of services you do. For instance, in this setup, I'm going to have crews one through nine be mowing crews. So this is going to be um, Jesse's crew. And I can put mowing or I can put Jesse's mowing crew, whatever. I want. Now, most of the reports will be based on the crew number, but j the name of the crew will show up in a variety of places that would be useful. All right, so I have crew two, Jesse's crew mowing, and over here on the left would be all of the employees that I set up. Now, again, there are only two of them. And over here on the right would be included employees, that is, who's actually on Jesse's crew, crew number two. Well, Jesse is. I can select this 
and I can double click on it to move it over or use the arrow to move it over there. So I'm gonna double click. Now we have Jesse and this crew. If I scroll down, I can select a foreman. Jesse's gonna be the foreman. And by the way, if you're editing a crew and you delete the foreman here, his name stays here and when you save it, he's gonna reappear back on this list unless you also change the foreman setting here. Um, show crew and daily work, that is typical. The next thing though is you'd want to create a, um, a color for the crew. This comes into play in different places. The default is white for some reason, which makes it difficult to see on the white background calendar we'll look at later. And then active, this crew is active. If a crew becomes inactive, you can uncheck this and they'll be inactive. Now I'm gonna save this and close. Okay, so I've got crew two. Now let me come up here to one and we'll call this um, Clyde's Mowing Crew. And we're gonna save there and close. So now I have a couple mowing crews. As I mentioned, I want crews one to nine to be mowing. And so I come here to add, and this is gonna be crew 10. And this is going to be my applicator. You call it sp spray tack or whatever you might be in Clyde's or applicator. Again, just set these up. Assign the color below. I'm colorblind, so these are not as useful for me as they will be for everyone else. And then save. And again, we'll just do one more. So this will be um, 20. And we're going to call this um, the irrigation tech. And this will be Jesse. And we'll also save this. All right, that's how you set up your employees and your crews in Clip ITC.